China unexpectedly delayed indefinitely the release of its much-watched GDP numbers set for tomorrow morning. So what are they worried about and what's next for China? Joining us now, Andy Rothman, investment strategist at the Matthews Asia Fund. Andy, welcome. Good to have you with us. Let's talk about Xi's speech. Then we'll get to the question of the GDP non-release and what, if anything, it signals. Uh, Xi sounded on, on the one hand sort of expectable, but on the other, maybe a little more bellicose with respect to Taiwan than was expected. Am I reading it right? Uh, I would read it differently, actually. I okay. read the entire 64-page speech last night, so you don't have to. Thank you. Um, and it wasn't fiery or bellicose at all, in my view. In fact, what he said about Taiwan was pretty much the same thing that he and previous Chinese, leader, Chinese leaders have been saying about Taiwan, that peaceful unification is their goal, but they're warning other countries, particularly the United States, to stay out of the way. So I think that he is relaxed and confident and not looking for trouble over Taiwan. So nothing particularly new there. I guess I was struck the number of times he mentioned national security, I'm told was a, more than 50 times. The response in the room to uh, references to the, the, to, the, to the ultimate destiny that, that China will, is not just, just may, will eventually be reunited with Taiwan. Right. Eventually is the key word. I mm -hmm. think my view that the party is willing to wait forever for that as long as there aren't moves to take Taiwan away from its current de facto independence towards formal de jure independence. Mm -hmm. But if you read the speech, to me it came off as one focusing primarily on economic development. There was a lot of language up front about the importance of growth, the importance of bringing more people into the middle class, and even things like total factor productivity improvements, hardly a, a Marxist, Marxist concept. You know, it's interesting, though, because we, we know that the China GDP numbers have been delayed. Our reporter, our, our CNBC correspondent in uh, China tells us the sense is that it may be that those who are responsible for publishing that report didn't want to embarrass Xi Jinping right now. Uh, I want to be even more specific when they're talking about this reunification, how the special administrative regions fall into that. How does Hong Kong and, and Macau fit into that? When we know right now there is a tight wire rope, especially where COVID policy goes and, and democratic freedoms, to adhere to Beijing and still maintain some independence? Great questions. Let's start with the economy first. I'm not sure why the economic numbers, which were supposed to come out tomorrow or tonight, our time, were postponed. But we already know that the economy in China is very weak right now. And it's weak primarily because... Households and corporates are afraid to spend, afraid to hire 